Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. All right, folks, Big Paul here today, and I got a good one for you. This is an interview I just did with Pete Rubish. You're going to like this. Pete needs no introduction. He is one of the world's best strength athletes. We're going to talk about his transition from being enhanced to being a natty and going from strength sports into extreme endurance races. It's a really great interview. We talk about life, experiences in life, your mortality, being a parent, and just setting priorities and goals in life. And I think this is a great interview. I like to do these interviews where it's just two dudes talking. I have no set agenda on these. And this is just sort of how things flowed when we were talking. You're going to be a fly on the wall with this conversation. Before we get started, I just want to remind you folks that I still have the sale on the anabolic bodybuilding community that I launched. With the community, we do a live private Q&A with the members once a week. Also have a message board where you can ask me questions and talk with the other members. The sale's still up. If Link's in the video description below if you want to go check that out and be a part of the community. Anyway, folks, let's get started here in just one second. <laughs> All right, folks, Big Paul here with the one and only Pete Rubish. What's going on, man? Not much, brother. What about you? Same old, same old. Just trying to figure out what I'm doing next. We were talking about it before I got my pro card. And I'm, I, it's like I always got to have something to be grinding on, man. It's like, and you you know, I, I, I see you're grinding away at new goals now and get, get stuff going on. But it's just like I said, once I had my pro card, I'd be done. But now I'm like, eh. Maybe I'll do one show and see what happens. And but um, you you know how it goes, though, man. Yeah, there's always something next. There's always another goal, so I can relate to that. When do you think? Like, when would be your next you know pro show? Then the first one, probably next year. Um, yeah. The there's only a handful. I, I I have no illusions of competing in the open uh, at 50 years old, right? You know, so yeah. I, I'll probably do a Masters pro show. There's there's a few of the shows that have master's divisions. I think the Chicago Pro or the Tampa Pro are probably my likely ones I'll do. Um, they have a master's division. And I might say fuck it and go in and do the open just to get last place just to say I did it. So it's like spaced out once a year basically for competing? Um, I only do once a year. I just like that's it's really hard on your body, man. It's yeah. just contest prep and all the drugs and the uh, – diet and just everything man it's like at 50 years old i don't I don't know how guys do multiple shows to be honest with you well okay how much i'm curious about this i did one bodybuilding show it was like a million years ago um uh, feels like it 15 years ago i was 19 at the time but how much does your weight come down from like peak off season weight to when you step on stage it's weird man like usually i you know Depends on how fat you let yourself get. That's a big part of it. Um, this year, I stepped on. I started prep at two fifty. I ended prep at two fifty. Wow. It was, yeah, I've never had that happen uh, before. I usually drop twenty, thirty pounds. Usually, so I stepped on stage the exact same weight as I started prep at. I just recomped. I actually gained weight the first half. I think what it was is I, I basically just I was I hadn't taken a break from the PEDs in a while and for about four months in the off season five months i don't know what my upbreak was between shows contest prep i just came down to um bodybuilding trt you know you know what i'm talking about yeah <laughs> and and just took a break from all the stuff and then i fired everything back up when i went into prep and i gained weight initially and caught a recomp and i just i didn't let myself get fat this year i think i was sub 10 percent coming into the 10% body fat coming into the prep. So I cut myself pretty lean and it just made it a lot easier. But usually, you know, just usually in the past, it's always been 20 pounds at least. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I figured you'd like lose a ton, but I could see if you were kind of going super clean in the off season, just adding in things, you'd basically be putting on muscle even during a cut. I'm like the opposite of everybody else, dude. I don't like to eat. 
I, I, I'm, I'm like the only guy that comes out of a bodybuilding show and loses weight. <laughs> Everybody is binge eating and, and getting fat. And I'm just like, man, I'm so fucking sick of eating. I'll, I'll go back down to eating like two or three times a day. Um, I even did some intermittent fasting last year. Just played around with that a little bit. I've never really tried it before. Um, I think that helped a lot. Kind of set me up um, for being, you know, it put insulin sensitivity, gastric emptying. Gave my gut a break. I mean, I've heard you talk about that. Uh, talk about insulin sensitivity being very important. Uh, just did some stuff to set myself up to have a good prep, I think. Did you feel like you slept better, too, when you were doing the intermittent fasting and things of that nature? Oh, yeah, yeah. man. Way better. I, I felt sharper, too, with the mental acuity as far as being able to focus on work. Because I, I had a pretty demanding job at the time. I was running an IT company. CEO of an IT company, so I have have to be on my toes during during the day. But yeah, I, I, I definitely felt sharper. I always kind of made fun of the intermittent fasting guys, and then I tried it, and I was like, "Fuck, man, this is actually pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. It works really well. I my all my all my blood markers improved. I uh, visceral fat was the lowest it's ever been. You know, just all these these things that um, you know my I mean, my blood panels were perfect coming into prep and pretty much stayed pretty great. Even with a high amount of gear on prep, I kept my blood blood panels pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, do you run anything alongside that, like the prescription pharmaceuticals? Do you run like anything for lipids or anything like that? Blood pressure? Yeah, in the off season, I'll run um, a low dose statin. Um, uh, uh, sometimes it just depends like i in, in the past like if i keep my diet clean if i keep the saturated fats pretty low and i put in strategically put in some low carb days um i can keep my lipids pretty pretty well in check i'll use some citrus bergamot and some um and some uh red rice yeast extract and then maybe a little bit of ezetimibe um in there and i can keep my lipids pretty pretty well in check that way Okay, that makes sense. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes I've had to use a statin in the past. Yeah, I dabble with with one from time time to time. I'll use like ten milligrams of resuvastatin, which yeah, is that's what I do. And I'll, yeah. even like when I've taken in the past once a week, it'll bring LDL down like twenty percent. Yeah, week. I was running it every other day, mm -hmm. um, and I noticed a pretty significant, pretty significant drop. And you know, with PEDs, usually it's the hdl that gets crushed mm -hmm. um i find if i keep cardio in and i'm careful with the saturated fat intake if my carbs are high it just depends i usually run a carb cycling diet um i i find that my my lipids stay pretty well in check yeah that makes sense do you get the naturally high blood pressure too because i i mean even like being off everything now mun runs a little high even with cardio in there, even with being lighter, yeah, it's just one. I've of always, things. I've always been a little hypertensive. I think it's genetic; it just runs in my family. So I, I do run forty milligrams of telmisartan, and that keeps me in line. You know, that would keep me at one twenty over seventy, pretty, pretty, um, pretty uh, decently. Sometimes in the past, I've run some nabivolol in the off season, um, um, a beta blocker, just a low dose, five milligrams. Nothing crazy, but I've I've done that in the past. Yeah, see, that's Keep interesting too because the telmisartan I've I dabbled in that a little bit, forty milligrams myself, and then I've tried even eighty, and it's just there's hardly any benefit going from forty to eighty from wrestling. No, it doesn't I've, move I've the needle that. at all. Um, and I've messed around a little bit with propranolol, but that you know usually my heart rate's pretty dang low already with all the running. Well, if you're doing. doing all the endurance stuff, you're doing yeah, it's going to stay low. But that's – well, the the crazy part, though, like when I got towards the end of all that, like, crazy endurance training, it was – we're talking 80, 90, 100 mile, miles of running per week. Um, when I got to the end of that, I started having, like, some tachycardia issues on two occasions where my heart rate would just be racing for, like, 30 minutes after I'd get done with a set, and it wouldn't come back down. And so that's when I kind of was messing around with the propranolol to kind of see if it would fix and alleviate that. Coupled with bringing the mileage down, it's helped a ton. So I haven't used propranolol in like a month or two, but I had these two incidents of uh, tachycardia, and I've, I've read, there's heard that 
Um, AFib is like 10 times higher in the really long endurance athletes. Yeah, you'll see it in endurance athletes. Um, it does happen. It's got to be stress related, I would think. Um, I, I I don't know the I don't know the physiology behind it, but I you do see it in in endurance athletes sometimes. I used to do some distance cycling. I, I don't now. Obviously, that runs counter to putting on mass for bodybuilding, but that was something I got into for for a while. You know, going out and doing hundred mile rides on the bike and shit like that. But um, but I uh, you know sometimes I would have the same thing happen occasionally and then it I've, it's just, i've never had it again since i stopped well, doing, doing the distance cycling so it only happened when i was riding and that's the thing you can take anything to an extreme so even at that kind of mileage it can be counterproductive to health if we're running 100 miles a week even 80. so now i'm running like by comparison twice a week i run six to six and a half miles so i went from like 80 miles a week to 12 and a half which is a much more manageable amount. I still get the health benefits and I just, it's not cutting into my like strength or physique goals. So Have you noticed it affects your strength at all or no? Not at, not at two days a week. So m Wednesday and Saturday are the days I run six to six and a half miles and those are no issue. Zero effect on strength. Um, hasn't negatively impacted physique. It's kept me leaner obviously. But once you start ramping the mileage up, you're like in that really higher end range, of course, it just, it, cuts you way down i mean i've put on 20 pounds since the race in june so big difference so the main thing that changed was just pulling your pulling your mileage down after that oh there, there was a lot that changed because that was a it was this hundred mile race in the mountains of wyoming and i've been training for it for like a year and a half everything I, I had i was putting into that so i basically stopped lifting anything the last two months because i was just literally too exhausted to lift coupled with the running and the mileage peaked at like my highest week of mileage was 102 miles so it's just you're exhausted all the time my diet wasn't very good at that point because it, i just wasn't strict about it i wasn't serious about it with not lifting and uh once that was done i uh, after the race which was june 15th i dialed in my diet um, gram of protein per pound of body weight I uh, cut the running way back from that crazy amount of mileage to the two days a week. Started lifting again four days a week, two days upper, two days lower. And then um, just it's been crazy since then. Went from 197 pounds to 217 pounds, which is where I'm at now. And uh, I feel really good at this weight. Strength's gone through the roof, obviously. And the only things I've been taking have been vitamin K2 and then uh, she legit. I'm trying out. Don't even know if it does a whole lot, but I'm, I'm giving it a shot for this company. And then I had, I did dabble a little with the propranolol after the race for, um, for the kind of tachycardia issue. And then I've, I've taken off and on resuvastatin and Thalmasartan, but not in about a month. So that's all I've been taking. Yeah, I was curious. That's interesting to hear that you, I was going to ask you about the diet when you were training for the endurance, uh, event that you, so you weren't following any sort of strict diet. You're just doing whatever. Oh yeah, there would be, um, I mean, I've, I've never taken my diet seriously until after the race. So the last like 12 weeks I've actually been taking it seriously and I've, I've seen a tremendous difference with my physique. That's been the, the game changer, obviously. But up until that point, I've always been kind of known for my, uh, my diet being pretty poor and eating whatever. So there were <laughs> days, you know, I'd smash a pie or whatever. Um, just whatever I felt like, like half a dozen donuts things like that just low protein didn't really worry about it because you're burning so many calories it's like you're yeah it probably like, doesn't matter so i'm gonna do forty five thousand steps today like it doesn't you know um but my physique definitely was uh it deteriorated a bit without the lifting and coupled with the bad diet so since then taking the diet seriously lifting hard again it's probably like close to the best i've looked even when i was on peds it's uh things have been really good so well, I think diet is the area, where, especially physique, is the area where you can make, I mean, it's going to have the hugest impact on physique. I, I think that's what separates bodybuilders from it, pretty much any other athletes is how seriously the diet is dialed in. Uh, I mean, I, I can, you know, honestly, I, I've seen guys, I train guys all the time and that, that'll be on a ton of 
PEDs and they look like shit. And then you get the diet fixed and they instantly change. I also work with some professional athletes, man. It's it's crazy to see how awful a lot of these professional athletes eat. I got guys that are in the NFL, man. And this is one dude I was talking to and he's eating McDonald's and candy and just whatever, man. And then he's a freak athlete. And I'm like, I guess if you got the genetic gifts, it doesn't fucking matter. And like yeah. you said, the activity load is so high. It probably you're probably just burning it all up anyway. Probably you probably need some trash in there just to get some calories in. Well, it, it's so crazy because the whole time I was like in my prime of strength with powerlifting, and I was on everything. I never took diet that seriously, and I still made crazy gains. But now I almost wonder what I could have done if I had that better dialed in, like I do now, because I've seen it, and I, I have seen it more for physique. Like physique looks way different with proper food and nutrients and all that. Um, it has a slightly lesser effect, I feel like, on strength, but I'm glad I'm taking it more seriously now. And that's all part of the like transition to worrying about my health a little more and all that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I work with some power lifters too. You, could, you definitely can affect strength uh, to a degree uh, with it, but I, I think just overall health. And as you get older, how, how old are you right now? 33 years old. Yeah, you're still young, man. See, like I could eat a dozen donuts when I was, you know, in my twenties and still have a six pack, man. You'll you'll notice as you approach middle age, man, you gotta be more dialed in with that stuff and little things like like, like even just inflammation with, with the diet you know, and, and how that affects the performance and stuff like that. You'll notice as you get older that that, that changes. Yeah, I could see that. It's it's not even quite as easy now as it was maybe in my twenties, but still doing all right what what sparked the want to do the endurance stuff versus strength training what 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 got your piqued your interest in in all that i think it was a culmination of things like having been off um peds and testosterone it just was hard to progress in the gym like everything you know yeah. felt terrible it, it was hard to be motivated when you're hitting numbers that are way lower than what you've done and so I, I kind of needed to pivot to something else, just like we talked about, where we're, we're always driven for the next goal, whatever that may be. It could be in any avenue. And I'd long kind of known about ultra running and the 100-mile races and just felt like, you know, I wanted to give it a go. And, in, you know, I only made it 66 miles. I didn't even get through the whole thing. Um, see, only 66. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was, it was disappointing because it just everything blew up on me. At a certain point, there was everything went wrong, at, at, which, you know, will tend to happen when you're going that long. But it just was like a new goal, and it, I needed something to push me. And lifting is just – it's so much tougher now, obviously, without any anything in my system like that. It's just it, – it, I can't – you know, I'm not going to go deadlift 900 pounds tomorrow. It's just not the same, so it's hard to be as driven. Yeah, and that's, that's one thing that's hard – Hard to go back. I, I mean, I went. I, I think I told you when we started. I, when I came off, man, I just stopped lifting. It wasn't fun anymore. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not fun at all. What? Why did you come off? What was your your? You know what? What made you want to come off? Usually, I very rarely once. Usually, once guys, I, I tell dudes, it's like getting bit by the vampire. Once you're a vampire, you're a vampire forever. And very few people actually come off. That and that's true. It's it's um, and I should say like lifting's fun now, but it's taken like four years, <laughs> so <laughs> it took a while. But um, the first thing was, and I know it can be done when you're still on stuff, but I wanted to have a child, so it was it was kind of uh, that was the main thing. It's like I want to have a kid, and we made that call to give it a go. So it took seven months after coming off everything to get my wife pregnant. And I did like a little PCT afterward, nothing too crazy. I did um, 15 days alternating HCG and HMG. And then I did Cloma and Novadex for like two or three weeks after that. And then, you know, I think it was like July, she got pregnant, had my daughter. And then at that point, I kind of, you know, rode out the tough part of it where you're like the first couple months, things are really at a low. I, like I remember yeah. 60 days after, it was either 60 or 90 days after my testosterone levels were 38 nanograms per deciliter. Yeah, that's and, not uh, fun. No, you just like you do one set in the gym and you're smoked. There's You're so sore. There's nothing you can do. And, you know, I got through all that hard period 
with no libido for like a year. The first year there was no libido. Um, and then I'm just like, well, I guess I'll just stay off. We kind of talked about it and, you know, I want to, I want to be a little healthier with my lifestyle and all that. And I was worried about things because of family history of heart disease, heart attacks. Yeah. And I have this like naturally high lipoprotein little A level that's sky high. So I'm like, all right, I, I got to be more serious about this. Um, high blood pressure, things of that nature. And I just decided to keep rolling with it. So the highest I've seen on an actual uh, blood panel since I've come off was 500 nanograms per deciliter. Yeah, per that's, fi that's fine. Bad, yeah. I mean, that's what a normal, I mean, a normal adult male is at your age, typically. I mean that's that's not out of, out of range. It's uh, man, it's it's hard to go through all that. I think a lot of guys, it uh, psychologically, I think that's the hard part. It's you, you get your identity wrapped up into being strong or big or whatever whatever it is, and that's the hard part to walk away from. I think that's a hundred percent it. I mean, I was known all those years as like you know I was two fifty three ish typically two hundred fifty three pounds, and I'm six feet tall, and it. You know, everybody knows you as that person. And, you know, any period of time, I, I basically was deadlifting like 850-ish. And it's, it would get up to nine maybe if I was on a cycle. Um, benching, you know, 450 at all times. And it was just, you know, you're used to that standard of strength. And then you go where you're at like a, you know, cut a major percentage of that off. And it's it's hard to stay motivated. It's You shrink down. I mean, I pretty much felt like I lost everything. And have had to build back up even to where i'm at now but uh, I, i've had to like almost reinvent a new identity because i just can't be that person it's not the same yeah i remember some of your your strength feats man you're, you're crazy fucking strong man it's insane yeah but i mean it's you know we all have these phases in life we have to go through man it's you know it's you know i it's like i was telling you i was doing bodybuilding in my in my twenties, and then just walked away from it for family and business. I I did um, knock my ex wife up with my first kid while I was on. So, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so folks, that's a lesson for you. If you think that you're bulletproof while you're on, uh, that is not true. Uh, just ask Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> yeah, he's got like he's got like twelve kids. Some people, some people, it, it, you know, it really can be done on cycle. I think we we're just trying to give ourselves the best chance so yeah i mean some so i you know i work with clients to help them with fertility sometimes and some guys are completely shut down uh there's there's sperm count zero <laughs> when they when they come out uh come out of uh being on cycle and then other guys just seem to be resilient it's some of it's just genetics i i think and i think i was really shut down i mean there was a period of 23 to like 26 I mean, I ran trend acetate for basically those three years straight, things like that. Holy shit, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just all like year round for three years. And I made some really good gains, but <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was it was wild. There's there's some overlap with the bodybuilding world that I've had as far as like being around bodybuilders, um, because I know there were different things that like impacted me over the years as far as what I wanted to do with with peds and that um because when i was in kentucky for a year i trained at the same gym where um matt jansen and dallas mccarver were at oh yeah and then he they both we moved at the exact same time it was really strange we both moved to knoxville and uh we were also at the same gym in tennessee dallas and, and matt so dallas was the same age as me and I, I talked to him a little bit and i saw him training all the time um and that that definitely affected my my thought process when uh when that all happened and just little things like that over the years you see and i i wasn't like super close to boston but i, I talked to him quite a bit because i was friends with leo of leo mm -hmm. and longevity and um we texted a fair bit and uh i remember like texting him the night before he passed away too so it was just stuff like that where i was like man um uh, i don't know it just because it has a bit of an effect I mean, we play dangerous games, that's for sure. It's, uh, I mean, and it's something you got to think about when you have a family too. It's you know, when you when you have a family, it's more than just you. When it's when you don't have kids, you can be a little more selfish. 
and that's how it felt. I mean, when I was single and just not married or anything, didn't have a kid, I was kind of in my own world, it felt like. But, um, and the last couple of years, I feel like there hasn't been too many uh, deaths. But for a while, you remember that like year or two, it was just like all the time, like Sean Road. Yeah. That was, uh, that was a lot to take in. Um, so. I think guys are a little more aware now and, and are being more proactive with their health and taking care of their cardiovascular health. I mean, really, the biggest risk is cardiovascular events when you look at it, when using PEDs, heart attacks, strokes, aneurysms. I mean, that's usually, most of the time, that's what's going to um, acutely going to get somebody. But most of the guys that are dropping over, it's usually something related to a cardiovascular event. Yeah, that's... Have you ever done one of those... Um angiograms or anything like that yeah yeah i've had had that done because i just did that too and i was just like wanted to cross that you know be sure where things are at um and then i've had imaging done of like the the gi tract for a, a kidney stone issue that was its own thing it's like a 24 millimeter kidney stone so i got to see the imaging of the kidneys and all that and they all checked out but i'm glad i did all that stuff to kind of know what i'm working with right now so yeah i try to i've been lucky man i mean it's you know at my age it's probably stupid doing what i'm doing but my blood work and my imaging have been decent but i've also been you know i pushed hard for my pro, pro card this year but for the most part i pretty conservative and i and i'm proactive with with things like taking care of my diet keeping my diet plays such a huge role in it man people don't realize it, it especially with lipids and whatnot and blood pressure the, you know, really, when you think about what's going to kill people that use PEDs, a lot of times it's a cascade of of high blood pressure coupled with lipid skewing, and it just has a cumulative effect. And you end up having you know, um, arteriosclerosis. You end up having uh, uh, you know, high blood pressure, which can cause aneurysms. I mean, that that's what got Boston, if I remember right. It was an aortic a- aneurysm. Probably from chronic high blood pressure. The kidney issues are usually from chronic high blood pressure. And, and it's the, the crazy thing is, is if you're intelligent with your compound choices and take some proactive steps, you can mitigate a lot of that. I'm not saying you can completely eliminate it. I, I compare it to riding a motorcycle. I mean, it's, it's a dangerous activity, but you can make it safe, safer. You can wear a helmet. You can, you know, make better choices. But it, you know, you're still you're still taking a risk. I mean, it's 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 a higher risk risk thing. But this, you know, some of the guys that passed early were, were pushing things a little too far. And then there's just genetics. I mean, some people just if some of it's just luck. Oh, I totally agree. I mean, I remember like Antoine Vian. He was saying his calcium score was like crazy high, and um. Then you have other people completely unscathed. So it's mine's zero, man. And I've been doing this for, you know, I'm 50 years old, man. And I, I usually my LDL is a little elevated. And I just, mine was zero. It always has been. You had a zero calcium score? Yeah. Wow. Did you do, so yeah. did you do the, um, did you do fMRI or any of that other stuff? Echocardiogram? Yeah, I've done echoes. I, I have a little bit of LVH. I like to keep tabs on my ejection fraction because that's another thing that sneaks up on people. A lot of times you don't realize that you have low ejection fraction until it's too late. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that'll sneak up on you too and you end up with, with you know, heart failure, basically. One of my friends is going through, the young guy, going through that right right now. Um, you know, and then you couple that with other things. You know, it, um, you know, if you get sick, you know, there was, I can't say it, but the virus that, was going around recently that doesn't help cardiovascular things on top of what we're doing um so you couple that with that and you know you have even bigger problems um so it's 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 cumulative effect i i think it, you know there's only there's only so much you can redline the engine before things start breaking down and then some people are just built different man you, it, it's like <laughs> You know, so, some of these big pro bodybuilders that seem to go unscathed, man, they're they're built like a Ferrari. You can redline a Ferrari all day long, and it's fine. Can't do that with a within a within a Corolla, right? You know, so yeah. you know, some people are just made to. It's like it's like you're, you know, we all have that uncle in our family that drinks and smokes his whole life and lives to be 
90 years old. It's just luck. It's genetic luck. Yeah. And if you're on the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, like somebody I, like Dallas, is, as young as he was, even if he was pushing things, shouldn't most people are not going to have those kind of problems, but he probably was genetically predisposed to having those issues, didn't know it, and then it just was just bad luck. Yeah, that one just blows my mind because he was 26. I'm just like, I didn't think it was even possible, really. Um, I know you hear some some stuff from time to time about a, a young person having a heart attack, but like, I don't know. That's That one blew my mind. Um, I had a friend I played basketball with, man, that passed away in his 20s um, from a heart attack, wasn't using PEDs, you know, so... It does happen, but I I would suspect you know I looked at his autopsy, but I was I would suspect that he was genetically predisposed. Probably had some sort of fa- family history of of uh, arteriosclerosis because I think he they said that he had almost an entire blockage of his uh, coronary artery, if I remember, and that's just abnormal for a guy yeah, his that's age. Crazy. Yeah, you would have to have. Even if you were doing the craziest cycles ever, you'd still have to have like the deck stacked against you. It's it's insane. Well, those are the things you don't know. And then like a guy like him, if he had had a calcium CT scan <laughs> done, or if he had had some imaging done, probably would have found out and could have taken corrective action and would still be here. That's the it, thing. You know, That's why I think everyone should like get this done. Look into it. Make sure your heart checks out just so you know do you have any wiggle room or is it something you really got to be serious about? Cause I think a lot of those guys, the same thing with Boston, if he would have gotten an angiogram, he would have seen, okay, you're developing an aortic dissection. Like you've got to stop yep. ASAP. Well, I mean, and it, obviously that one was blood pressure related because that's how that happens. There's yeah. So but if I recall correctly, didn't his father have the same thing and had to have surgery to repair it? Correct. I so there, yes. there's definitely a genetic component. Yeah, so it was a combination. I mean, we all know that Dallas was mashing the gas pedal down. Or not Dallas, but um Boston was mashing the gas pedal down, but you combine that with a genetic predisposition to um this stuff, it's it's a bad combination. So you kinda have to be aware of what you can get away with. I'm not justifying doing things, but it's That's calculated fine. calculated risk. Yeah, and that's why I think people should like check it out and see what they're dealing with. But the other one that's interesting, like the lipoprotein little a thing. So supposedly that leads to an expedited level of plaque development. Yeah. Um, do you know what yours is at? Mine's always great. Good. You know, yeah. so so while I have high LDL, um, my lipoproteins are in in line. So that's probably why I have a zero calcium score. My dad is the same way. My dad's always had high ldl and he has zero calcium score except you know he's in his 70s wow so it's genetics genetics play you know it's just once again i i kind of you know i don't want to um i don't want to you know knock on wood but i i've been lucky in that area i don't want to jinx myself here but that's that's something i've been genetically lucky with yeah, see my I've had other health issues over the years. I had cancer, wow. you know, you know, so, you know, I got the shit in of the stick on that one, but it's, uh, you know, so some of it's just, just luck, man. At the end of the day, what kind of cancer was it? I had a melanoma and then I had to have all my lymph nodes. You can kind of see where my neck is all fucked up. I had to have my lymph nodes removed from my neck. I had a tumor in my salivary gland. Yeah, it was pretty fucked man. up. Man. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here though. So this that was you know seven eight years ago, something like that. Holy cat! So did you? Okay, you got to tell me about this melanoma. So did you just notice something was like way off there? You saw a spot, dude. It was crazy. I didn't even know I had it. I was in a car wreck, and the doctor at the hospital. The just dumb luck. I probably would have died. I probably it probably would have would have killed me eventually. I he noticed it when I was in the hospital, he was checking it out. He's like, "You got a spot on your back that looks weird, man." He's like, "You need to get that checked out right away." And I I waited like a month or so, and then the girl I was with at the time was just like, "Like, hey, man, you, you need to you need to follow up on this." And I went and checked, and it it was it was it was. Uh, a melanoma man they had to they had to go in and take it out and take my lymph nodes and it was just like the doctor told me like 
you need to send that ER doctor uh, a bouquet of flowers. He saved your life, man. You you would probably have, because it was on the, my back. I'm, it's not like I'm looking at my back. And I used to lay in tan, you know, dummy bodybuilder. I used to lay in tanning beds all the time. Hey, <laughs> dude, that is unreal. That's uh, cr crazy, man. There's some things that you just, like, I don't know, fate, fortune. I don't know what the fuck you want to yeah. call it, man. Just dumb luck. Man, I, I the, think the, that. The guy, the guy looking out for me, I whatever, whatever it was. Man. For you, brother. <laughs> whatever it was, man, that's, you, know, you get a second chance like that. It definitely changes your perspective on things. How, okay. How did that change your perspective? Like what I'm, I'm sure after that you're starting seeing everything different. Um, just to value each day. Like I think when you're, especially when you're younger, at least me, when I was younger, you sort of think of yourself as being immortal. Like you don't realize that it's, you just have that this is really temporary and we all, we all suffer one fate, man. We're all going to die soon at some point or another. And not that I'm in a rush to get there any sooner, but I want to make the most of every day that I have here. I want to get the most out of it. I want to appreciate the people that are around me. I want to accomplish things. I don't want to waste my life being negative and I don't want to waste my life being angry. I don't want to waste my life with regrets. I want to make sure that when I punch out that I've checked every box <laughs> along the way that I, you know, I don't want to be on my deathbed thinking, man, what if? That's one of the reasons why, you know, stupid. One of the reasons why I chased getting my pro card in bodybuilding because I thought I had potential when I was younger, and then I just kind of wasted it because it just wasn't very focused. I was partying and doing whatever, and just like I'd take it seriously for a little while, and then I'd tune out and just you know just things like that. I, it, you know, because I'm like I always have time. I got plenty of time to do this. I'll do it later. And then it made you realize that you don't have plenty of time. <laughs> that it could all be gone tomorrow. I mean, shit, you walk out and be in a car accident. I mean, that's, you know, you don't, you don't know. So I, I wanted to make sure I got the most out of each, each remaining day that I had left. Wow. Do you have any, like, do you have any other major goals that are, or things in life that you, you want to do or see or, um, uh, I've been pretty, I've been lucky. I'm not trying to humble brag or anything. I've been pretty successful in business. I just retired from my job. Oh, congrats, um, um, I want to help people. I've been trying to, you know, I enjoy coaching. Bodybuilders have been helping guys. It, it's not even really about the bodybuilding. It's, it's trying to teach other people about, how, I mean, you, you understand this, but how to push yourself and how you can get more out and i think like bodybuilding or sports in general get, teaches you those lessons it gives you that skill set where you can learn how to be able to achieve goals and i think it's it's kind of cool when you see that light go on when it when a guy can go from being chubby and get on the stage and then you can transfer that to other areas in your life whether it's business or whatever i i, I enjoy helping people i'm trying to pay it forward a bit um, just getting my kids through college, traveling. I definitely want to travel and experience the world. Just live life and experience the world, really. I'm kind of in the last phase of life when you really think about it. I'm 50. I mean, how much longer? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the last third, third of things, you know, realistically. I mean, you know, as I think the average adult male in this country was to be something like 75, 76. So, you know, it's crazy to think about. You know, 25 years ago, I was 25 years ago, holding <laughs> in another 25 years, I might be gone. So, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, you know, and goals will pop up. But the main thing is I just want to get the most out of each day, try to treat people with kindness, help people where I can, um, make, you know, make and create new experiences, new friendships, things like that. I mean, it's just really kind of, cheesy stuff <laughs> at the end of the day just live life really so many people waste their life sitting on the couch i get that no i mean i think that would have a profound impact on you where it's like all right you're going along everything's great and then melanoma boom you were that close to death and you know it 
and it's like a second chance, you know? Yeah, I mean, I was lucky in that I, you know, it wasn't... <laughs> It wasn't like I was full blown chemotherapy and all that shit. You know, it was just surgery and some, you know, some treatment. It was, you know, honestly, I was pretty lucky. So I shouldn't, you know, I know some people suffer and go through way worse than I did, but it just, it definitely made me realize that I gotta, gotta, you know, treat each day with some urgency. Did that change then, like how you spend your time each day? Yeah, yeah, man. I, I, um, I still allow myself some recreation, but I think I was spent a lot of time wasted on things that are meaningless. You know, you know, consuming media, sitting around watching TV, playing video games, shit like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I, I still do it on occasion, but I wanted to spend more time experiencing life, doing things, getting pushing myself out of my comfort zone, um, shit like that. You know, you, I mean, you know this, man. You're doing it. Yeah, and I, I think that's one of the things, you know. I'm, I'm Enjoying find, my family. Exactly. I try to find a balance with it because <laughs> you think about every day, you're like, am I spending too much time watching football or even doing stupid things on your phone, you know? And I know it's not an infinite number of years we have, so I'm almost like, I don't know. I think about it a lot. Yeah, somebody told me, I don't know, I don't remember who it was. It was like spend more time creating rather than consuming. And I think that that one that kind of stuck with me. Um you know, creating experiences rather than consuming content or consuming other you know, you know, if you're that's sort of the way I weigh and measure the balance. If I'm creating or helping other people or being productive or even 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 doing something like this um rather than sitting around goofing off all day long that i find that my life is more fulfilled when i do sp spend the majority of my time doing that versus consuming no that makes perfect sense i'm basically trying to do the same thing less watching what everybody else is doing than um doing things and you've obviously you've done that if you've developed a successful business like that's part of what what that is how that happens yeah, you're a doer. Yeah, I mean, you you are too, man. You 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 get how it goes, and it definitely changes when you have. How old is your kid now? Two years old, little over. Two years old. Yeah, I mean, you're you're getting into the fun part. You're going to see him grow up. My kids are grow, pretty, just about growing up at this point. But you'll you'll see as you go, man. That time flies by, and uh, having a kid just changes your perspective on everything. How old are your kids? Uh, my daughter's about 17 my son's 13 man that's crazy to think like at that age oh, it'll be there it'll be there fast man you'll be you'll be shocked about how quick it goes by i think that what, how do you how do you balance like the business with with family and child childhood when they're they're growing up like that well, it's another thing. It's just like going to the gym, man. You have to prioritize time. You know, everybody says they don't have time to go to the gym, and there is time. It's just how you choose to use your use your time. You have to make time to spend with your family too. It's it's uh, you know, they're just you have to set aside and be able to go do some things with them and spend time with them. Um, it's uh, it's a choice. You know, some people make their own choice and others don't. You know, I've I've been sort of forced into it because I've been mostly a single parent um, for the majority of them growing up. But it's uh, that's a long story. But <laughs> anyway, it's, you know, it's how you prioritize your time, really, at the end of the day. Well, another reason to spend less time consuming, you know, and we'll do things together, too. Like I'll take them to the movies or whatever, just a little shit, go out to dinner um you know we just went to an amusement park the other week you know you carve out time we went to a concert stuff like that no i get that yeah oh these are all the things i think about now being in your 30s versus 20s where it's like you're focused on yourself Thanks. yeah 20s are 20s are a selfish period but i think you need that um i was pretty selfish in my 20s and i, th I think it helps balance you out as you get older um, you know, having that period of your life where you do all those things and because you don't want to have regrets either. Nothing's worse than an old man with regrets. Yes. 
I, I don't know. I'm trying to avoid that too, but <sighs> yeah, it feels like 20s are like a more of a selfish period. 30s are kind of uh, so far. It feels like discovering how to be how to balance it all. Really, that's where I feel like I'm now. Yeah, balance family, and then I'm kind of shifting to the other side of it now, where my kids are almost grown, and they're you know they're going to be moving on and then it's it's time for the next phase of my life where you can kind of go back to being a little selfish again right you know so you you're, you're gonna have a 18 year window where you have the kid ha the kids have to come first and then and then you can go back to doing some somewhat selfish stuff man that's crazy so it's all coming full circle now you won the pro card you have that time <laughs> you know? retired no no I don't know. Shit, it's it's kind of a silly thing, man. Who knows where where it's gonna go? What's next for you? What are your What are your plans? <laughs> or do you know? Or are you just taking it, wait, taking it? Yeah, it's it's one of those things. I I'm definitely more focused on like building my physique and getting stronger right now, um, and seeing how high I can take the numbers off off everything, and then. Cause I, I want to stay around 220. I feel, I feel pretty good at about 220 pounds and I, I like having the balance of like, okay, I can go run a 10 K, but I'm also trying to, to push for like a 700 pound deadlift and, and just be well-rounded. But I, I think I was so focused on that hundred mile race for so long and it was time consuming that I don't want to have anything too crazy in the near future like that. Cause it was a very all encompassing goal. I mean, very long days, a lot of introspection, just time out in the woods, like <laughs> by yourself. And someday I want to make it right and go back and, and complete the thing because it about killed me. And it's just a personal thing. It's like, uh, I thought I did everything I could have done preparation wise to finish. And it humbled me bad, like big time, just humbled me. And uh, I want to go back and, and get it done. No matter, like, they give you 35 hours, I want to get it done at some point in the next couple of years when I feel like the time is right. And there were a lot of mistakes made and things to learn from. So I, I in hindsight now, I know what to do. I mean, there was – I was one of the bigger guys there for sure. I was, you know, just two, just about 200 pounds. Um, so it's tougher. You're not, you're not this, like, you know, you're not very skinny and, and knocking this out. So it was tougher, but – Cramping was a major issue because there's some huge climbs. I mean, we started off, it was like a 4,000 foot climb out of the canyon from like mile four to mile eight or nine. It was like 4,000 feet. We're going straight up out of this canyon in the mountains. And that that's when the cramping kicked in. My legs were locking up on me. I, I couldn't stand up. Uh, really bad cramps. So that, that was a problem for a lot of the race. And then... I think I like somewhat poisoned myself with the uh, stream water because I, I had a filter bottle that had like a filter you put on top, but I was good until about mile 28. And then I had some stream water that I thought was, you know, properly filtered before that. And I just had to go to the bathroom, you know, constantly. Oh man. Yeah. For like yeah. the next 35 miles. I don't know how you could even continue. It got rough. It got bad. And then the other mistake I made, fatal flaw, I didn't even think about this. The uh, <laughs> So you're having to go to the bathroom all the time. And I had, um, I'd pack baby wipes thinking mm -hmm. that'd be fine. I didn't realize the alcohol was going to cause problems. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, dude. So it was, things were not going well. Yeah, that doesn't pair well with chafing. Oh my gosh, it was incredibly painful. So between that and the uh, the poisoning myself from the, the mountain water, it just was going downhill. And then at that point, my feet were so blistered. I was I was in I was in hell basically. Like um, man, I felt bad. I, I felt like a, a zombie, and it, it, I just I had nothing left. It's too many mistakes at that point, and they just all compounded on one another. So your feet are done. I lost two big toenails, both of them. Holy shit. Yeah, they both You're... fell off completely. 
you're a tough sob <laughs> it's i mean it is it's it's like its own thing like the sport of ultra running is and there's a lot of walking hiking because it's there's sections it's impossible to run you're not going to run it's impossible you're eight thousand feet up going straight up it's like there's no running um it's like a suffer fest but it's in a beautiful setting in the mountains and the bighorn mountains of wyoming so it's just a lot of stuff i mean you're running through the night it goes from 85 degrees where you're the heat's killing you for the first 30 miles and then it starts cooling off and then at night it's down to like 35 and you're seeing your breath and you have to have a whole different set of clothes and it was just it was crazy it was a grind um and i just want to go back and, and knock it out someday but I don't have any dreams of like doing other races. Like I don't really like running all that much. It's it's somewhat nice when it's it's not hot out. But running that far is not fun. Running hiking. Uh, but I just want to get that done at some point. Yeah, when you have that incomplete task in the back of your head, it just sticks with you. Yeah, it's like the pro card. Like never having gotten it for you, for me, never having finished the race. Like I didn't get to cross the finish line and I got to see other people doing it and it just, it eats at you. Yeah. That, that, and especially if you know, you made mistakes and it's hard, you know, I, I've believe me, I've made mistakes before. And sometimes you put your, your health at risk when you make mistakes and it's hard to dial back and just tell yourself you need to pack it in. I know how I am, man. I'll, I'll die before I give up. And I still like, I'm like, was I not, you have the questions of like, did I just give up or could I have gone further? And you have these questions in the back of your head. And like, I was, I was on the last bit of energy I had at the end. I mean, you can't just drop out at any point because you're so isolated out in the mountains. You, you have to keep going to be able to like quit. Like you can't, that's what sucks. <laughs> like you could be dead and it's like, oh, you still got to go five miles through the mountains to get back to a place where they can like get you out of there. So I was done at like 60 and then I had another six miles of like 45 minute miles. Like I was clocking 45 minute miles, just, you know, death marching um, to get back to the point where I could get a ride out on these crazy roads where there's like, you have to go through streams and boulders and um, then it's like a two hour drive back. And so it's very remote, but I, I wonder, you know, sometimes I'm like, could I have pushed a little more? And the main thing that like shut it down was just feeling like you have to constantly go to the bathroom and then how painful that got from the baby wife. So I don't know. I, don't I think know. when you get to the point where you're sick, you have to stop. You know, there, there's, there's just when your body gives up, there's nothing, you know, you can push through pain and things like that. But when you're actually sick, that's a different, it's a different ball game. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't eat anymore at that point. Um, I could drink, but eating was like impossible. And uh, the, the pain of the feet was pretty excruciating and, and everything else. But I had this guy running with me and he was a uh, he won like WBF Worlds. What, what's the natural federation like W? I think that's it. I think that's WBF. Yeah, he won their worlds in bodybuilding in 2018. Um, Sam Okinola. That's and cool. He, he was with me helping uh kind of pace me and this guy is huge like compared to everybody else out there he was he was 220 on the trail biggest guy out there muscular and then he did one a month later and he actually got through it, it took him like 30 wow that's hours. impressive yeah it's the most impressive thing i've seen because this guy 220 pounds and he like barely beat the cutoff like for this race this race was was very difficult in montana and uh man like I'm thinking about that. I'm like, so basically where I'm at now, my weight now is what he was at. And, uh, he did it. And I, uh, man, I know he was hurting. So that, that's like, you don't see that. You don't see guys over 200 pounds too much. Um, that's crazy, man. Yeah. He, and he's, I, he's jacked. Like, I, I don't know. How old is this guy? 40, 40, man. That's even more impressive. <laughs> crazy. I, when I I hadn't met him, I'd never met him until he was in Wyoming, and then I saw him, and I'm like, this guy's huge, like he's got to be like six two, two twenty, um, super jacked, and I don't know, he did it. So that also is like where you're like, okay, if Sam can do it, I got to be able to do this. But that that's kind of the main thing. Other than that, I just want to get as strong as possible and and be healthy. 
strong and be able to do distance stuff. <laughs> That's crazy, man. And I mean, your strength drops off a cliff, as does your physique and your muscle mass when you're like going that high mileage. But I got it back pretty quick. It's been like 12 weeks now and it's come back real fast. Everything has rebounded so you can get it back quickly. But obviously you take that temporary hit when you're really pushing for that goal. And now it's like all about being well-rounded. Like it'd be cool to be able to like knock out a half marathon, even if it was kind of slow. And then deadlift, like be able to deadlift 700 pounds, bench 400. Like those are kind of, that'd be a good spot to be at for me where it's like, I'm well-rounded 220 pounds body weight, um, good blood levels, you know, good biomarkers, all that sort of stuff. Well, I have no aspirations of running a marathon, a half marathon, or deadlifting 700 pounds. <laughs> I just need to look pretty. <laughs> I, I have more of that too, though. Like that's more of a goal nowadays where it's like the physique thing wasn't a focus for all those years. I never did isolation movements. It was all compound lifts based around like the big three squat, bench and deadlift. And nowadays I find myself doing tons of isolation work, um, really trying to get the physique as, as impressive as possible, too. So I, I relate to that. It's just fun. Yeah, it's a different it's a different set of uh, different set of goals, but I mean yours is more functional. I do miss endurance stuff though. I miss cycling. I'd, I'd like to get back to doing that at some point. It's a it was a lot of fun. Do you ever get tempted to go back on anything? Does that does that creep in your mind sometimes? Not too much. I mean, I don't miss it. I just I don't miss pinning myself. Like it felt like such a that chore. It sucks. It's like a chore. It's like you gotta go do this you know and even when you're on a, a cruise and you're doing 250 a week it's like you still have to take that shot every week and uh i don't really miss it i mean it was really fun to be able to deadlift as much as i was and, and lift that much but sleep suffers you get the sleep apnea gets worse all everything gets tougher um i kind of like being well-rounded now and just having a little bit of everything even though it's not elite yeah, I mean, when I came off, I honestly I didn't miss it until I don't know when I when I it's like I like it's, I went shit 10 11 years without it and then didn't want to start it back up again. It started getting stronger and seeing progress and I was just like, "Oh, yeah, here we go." But then after the show, like after I got my pro card, I just came off everything cold turkey for a little bit. I'm just like I got tired of doing everything and then I'm kind of back on now, but it's it um it does get old i the pinning part is the part that gets old man yes <laughs> that's the part and, uh, being heavy does kind of suck when you when you're heavier with with the sleep apnea and whatnot i'm 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 hair under six two i'm like six one and i competed at two i think it was 250 on stage and then you know i'll go 270 280 in the off season and it's just like you know you just can't breathe and everything sucks man yeah, it's fun filling on a shirt and you feel like you're, you know, you feel like this jacked person walking around. But man, like the practicality of it gets gets difficult. So I've been there. Well, man, I got to wrap this up. Anything you want to promote? Anything you got uh, you want to share with anybody? No, no, you can just, I mean, you can find me on YouTube, um, P. Rubish Fitness and, uh, that's the place to find me. So, and you're on Instagram too, man. You get the yes, big following on Instagram as well. Well, Pete, I appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you so much. This is this has been fun, man. Awesome talking to you. I love talking to people that are crazy and and do extreme things. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and now you're a dad, so you've got that on your on your plate too. That's that's its own its own thing. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. I great talking to you, man. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, buddy. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.